Let me ask you on that topic. Uh, Elon Musk, Tesla Autopilot, is one of the only companies I believe is really pushing for a learning-based approach. Are you you're skeptical that that kind of network can achieve level four? L4 uh, is probably achievable, L5 probably not. What's the distinction there? Is L5 is completely, you can just fall asleep? Yeah, L5 is basically human level. Well, it would drive, you have to be careful saying human level, because like, that's yeah, the most- Yeah, there are of drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the clearest example of like, you know, cars will most likely be much safer than humans in, situa- in many situations where humans fail. It's the vice versa. So I, I, I'll tell you, you know, the thing is the, the amount of training data you would need to anticipate for pretty much every possible situation you, you'll encounter in the real world uh, is such that it's not entirely unrealistic to think that at some point in the future, we'll develop a system that's trained on enough data, especially uh, uh, provided that we can uh, simulate a lot of that data. We don't necessarily need actual, uh, actual cars on the road uh, for everything. Uh, but it's a massive effort. And it turns out you can create a system that's much more adaptive, uh, that can generalize much better if you just add um, uh, explicit models of the surroundings of the car. Uh, and if you use deep learning for what it's good at, which is to provide perceptive information. So in general, deep learning is, is a, a way to encode perception and a way to encode intuition. But it is not a good medium for uh, any sort of uh, explicit reasoning. And uh, in AI systems today, uh, strong generalization tends to come from um, explicit models, tend to come from abstractions in the human mind that are encoded in program form uh, by a human engineer, right? Yeah, These are the abstractions that can actually generalize, not the sort of uh, weak abstraction that is learned by a neural network. Yeah, and the question is how much, uh, how much reasoning, how much strong abstractions are required to solve particular tasks like driving. That's that's the question. Or human life, existence. How much how much strong abs- abstractions does existence require? But more specifically on, on driving, that's that seems to be that seems to be a coupled question about intelligence. Is like uh, how much intelligence. Like how do you build an intelligent system and uh, the coupled problem, how hard is this problem? How much intelligence does this problem actually require? So we're, um, we get to cheat, right? Because we get to look at the problem. Like it's not like you get to close our eyes and completely new to driving. We get to do what we do as human beings, which is uh, for the majority of our life, before we ever learn quote unquote to drive, we get to watch other cars and other people drive, we get to be in cars, we get to watch, we get to go and see movies about cars, we get to, you know, we get to observe all this stuff. And that's similar to what neural networks are doing. It's getting a lot of data. And the 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 question is, yeah, how much is, uh, how many leaps of reasoning genius is required <laughs> to be able well, to actually effectively drive? I think it's an example of driving. I mean, sure. Um... Uh, you've seen a lot of cars uh, in your life before you learn to drive. But let's say you've learned to drive in Silicon Valley and now uh, you rent a car in Tokyo. Well, now everyone is driving on the other side of the road and the signs are different and the roads are more narrow and so on. So it's a very, very different environment. And uh, a smart human, even an average human, should be able to just zero shot it to just be Zero. operational in this in this very different environment yeah. right away, despite having had no contact with the novel complexity that is contained in this environment, right? And that is novel complexity is not just uh, um, interpolation uh, over the situations that you've encountered previously, like learning to drive in the US, right? I, I would say the reason I ask is one of the most interesting tests of intelligence we have today actively, which is driving in terms of having an impact on the world. Like when do you think we'll pass that test of intelligence? So I, I don't think driving is that much of a test of intelligence because again, there is no task for which skill at that task demonstrates intelligence unless 
uh, it's a kind of meta task that involves acquiring uh, new skills. So I don't think, I think you can actually solve driving without having uh, uh, any, any real amount of intelligence. For instance, if you really did have infinite training data, um, you could just literally train an end-to-end -end deep learning model that does driving, provided infinite training data. The only problem uh, with the whole idea is um, collecting a data set that's sufficiently comprehensive that covers the very long tail of possible situations you might encounter. And it's really just a scale problem. So I think the, there's nothing fundamentally wrong uh, uh, with this plan, with this idea. It's just that um, it strikes me as a fairly inefficient thing to do because you run into this, uh, this uh, uh, scaling issue with diminishing returns. Whereas if instead you took a more a manual engineering approach where you uh, uh, use deep learning modules uh, in combination uh, with um, engineering an explicit model of the surrounding of the cars and you, and you bridge the two in a clever way, your model will actually start generalizing much earlier and more effectively than the end-to-end -end deep learning model. So why would you not go with the more manual engineering oriented approach? Like even if, if you created uh, that system, either the end-to-end -end deep learning model system that's around infinite data or uh, the slightly uh, 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 more human system, I, I don't think achieving L5 would demonstrate uh, a general intelligence or intelligence of any generality at all. Again, the only possible test uh, of generality in AI would be a test that looks at skill acquisition over unknown tasks. But then For instance, you could take your L5 mm -hmm. uh, driver and ask it to, to learn to, to pilot a, a, a commercial airplane, for instance. And then you would look at how much human involvement is required and how much wow. training data is required uh, for the system to learn to pilot an airplane. And uh, that, that gives you a measure of how intelligent that system really is. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's a big leap. I get you, but the, I'm more interested as a problem. I would see, to me, driving is a black box that can generate novel situations at some rate, like what people call edge cases. Like, so it does have newness that keeps being, like we're confronted, let's say once a month. It is a very long tail, yes. It's a long tail. That doesn't mean you cannot solve it uh, just by by training a, a statistical model on a lot of data. Huge amount of data. It's, it's really a matter of scale. But I guess what I'm saying is, if you have a vehicle that achieves level five, it is going to be able to deal with new situations. Or, I mean, the data is so large that the rate of new situations is very low. Yes. That's not intelligence. So uh, if we go back to your kind of definition of intelligence, it's the efficiency. With which you can adapt to new situations, to truly new situations, not situations you've seen before, right? right? Not situations that could be anticipated by your creators, by the creators of the system, but truly new situations. The efficiency with which you acquire new skills. If you require, if in, in order to pick up a new skill, you require um, a very extensive training data set of most possible situations that can, that can occur in the practice of that skill, then the system is not intelligent. It is mostly just a, a, a lookup table. Yeah. Well. And likewise, if uh, in order to acquire a skill, you need a human engineer to write down uh, a bunch of rules that cover most or every possible situation, likewise, the system is, is not intelligent. The system is merely the output artifact uh, of uh, a process that, that, happens, that happens in their minds uh, of, of the engineers that are creating it, right? It is encoding uh, an abstraction that's produced by the human mind. And intelligence would, a, would actually be uh, the process of producing, of autonomously producing this abstraction. Yeah. Not like if you take an abstraction and you encode it on a piece of paper or in a computer program, the abstraction itself is not intelligent. What's intelligent is the the agent that's capable of producing these abstractions, right? Yeah, it feels like there's a little bit of a gray area. Like, because you're basically saying that deep learning forms abstractions too. 
but those abstractions do not seem to be effective for generalizing far outside of the things that's already seen. But generalize a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. No, deep learning does generalize a little bit. Like generalization is not uh, is not a binary; it's more like a spectrum. Yeah, and there's a certain point. It's a gray area, but there's a certain point where there's an impressive degree of generalization that happens. No, like the. I guess exactly what you were saying is uh, intelligence is um, how efficiently you're able to generalize far outside of the distribution of things you've seen already. Yes. So it's both like the, the so distance of how far you can, like how new, how radically new something is and how efficiently yes, absolutely. you're able to deal with so that. So you, you, you can think of uh, intelligence as a measure of an information conversion ratio like imagine uh, a space of possible situations and um, you've covered some of them. Uh, so you have some amount of information uh, about your space of possible situations that's provided by the situations you already know. And that's uh, on the other hand also provided by uh, the prior knowledge that the system brings to the table, the prior knowledge that's embedded in the system. So the system starts with some information, right? About the problem, about the task. And it's about going from that information to a program, what we would call a, a skill program, a behavioral program that can cover a large area of possible situation space. Um, and essentially the ratio between that area and the amount of information you start with uh, is intelligence. So a, a very smart agent uh, can make efficient uses of very little uh, information about a new problem and very little prior knowledge as well to cover a very large area of, of potential situations in that problem without uh, uh, knowing where these future new situations are, are going to be.